going on guys and welcome back to Sprint to the Finish episode 2. Today we're going to be driving with Sauber and Toro Rosso here at the Brazilian Grand Prix circuit. If you don't know what happened last time, basically we were the, the manner of Will Stevens first off and we finished, I think it was 14th in the end. I think it was 14th, was it 4th? No it wasn't, it was last. That was, that, that was McLaren and we finished last because we were up to about 14th then we got tagged by Massa on the second lap of the last corner so we're in last which wasn't great. Then with Fernando Alonso and the McLaren we got spun at the first corner and it just went chaotic and then we finished about 14th in the end. So I realised that last time the McLaren race was not eventful whatsoever so hopefully we do get two eventful races here and to be fair there's not much going on I can also talk about real life F1 and some other stuff regarding the channel as well. So with Felipe Nasa in the uh, Sauber starting for the first race today, the Toro Rosso I'm not sure which, uh, which driver I'm going with yet but I am quite positive about this because in practice we finished 12th with Felipe Nasa so we've certainly got a bit of decent at race pace. So we're starting just behind the two manners of Roberto Meri and Royal Stevens and we are away. We've had a decent start there, just got to go up the gears pretty quickly and make a dive up the inside. We've already got past Roberto Meri and Royal Stevens before we even get to the first corner and that's a very 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 good dive bump up the inside but we have got Maldonado there so we need to be careful. What is Maldonado doing there? And what is Sainz doing as well? Sainz has knocked us off as well and I think Maldonado has just gone off. I think it is looking at the map and Maldonado, what was he doing there? It could have been awful, but we've got a run on Carlos Sainz. Obviously, the Toro Rosso with the Renault engine, we've got a Ferrari engine, so we're much better than Carlos Sainz. And we're not actually in Rich Mix. We might wait till the last lap to do that, but actually, we're going to Rich Mix now. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of a hold up ahead, so we might be able to benefit from this. What a dive at the inside of Max Verstappen. And we're up to 12, so we pass past both Toro Rossos and Roman. Oh no, we. Oh no! That's that really annoying thing on F1 2015 whenever you get to the rear of someone and basically you hold on to them forever. And we've got past Roman Grosjean up to 11th. Can we catch up to the other cars? That's the two Force Indias and the two Red Bulls. And the field looks like it's pretty close. We're locking up quite a bit to be honest. And we do keep locking up. But that's the two Force Indias ahead. The two Red Bulls. And to be fair, P11 isn't a bad start. But obviously the Lotus of Roman Grosjean in the Mercedes engine is going to be a lot quicker than us on this straight here. I think we're just going to go onto the standard mix now. What a breaking corner that was. That was a good corner until we locked up and mucked up the corner in retrospective really. Grosjean would have gained a lot of time on us. And it looks like we got it looks like we've gained a lot of time on Hulkenberg in that uh, corner but then we just completely bottled it. I think Grosjean might well want to come up the inside. We're not going to go too defensive because you know what happened last time with Will Stevens. We just got knocked off but we haven't gone too defensive. We're in P11 still and this is actually quite decent. So speaking of Roman Grosjean in real life F1 I just can't believe what they've done with Haas to be honest. Oh we run wide a bit there. I just can't believe what they've done with Haas. I mean in an article I wrote with PS Luton Rules before the season started I predicted they finished 10th now, we've Sauber probably won't finish points because Sauber probably won't even finish the season. So that's at least 10th for Haas. And Roman Grosjean has scored what? Is it? Is it? Uh, I'm trying to work it out. Is it 18 points already? And speaking of points, we're just going on Nico Hulkenberg quite a bit, which is quite nice. DRS will be enabled next lap. But to be fair, honestly, it's so brilliant to see from Haas. I mean, they're pretty much already secured ninth, I'd probably say, because I doubt Renault are going to get enough points. Because Renault are decent, but I don't think they'll be con they'll, they'll be kind of like. Uh, just behind the mid pack, and as you can see, we've just gone done the fastest lap of the race. Doesn't help when we lock up like that, though. Um, we've just done the fastest lap of the race, which is very impressive. And DRS has been enabled. We will get it on Nico Hulkenberg, and will we be able to, in the set, we get our first points? Obviously, Nico Hulkenberg, the Mercedes engine, has got the DRS as well. And Grosjean is quite a way behind now. We've locked up again the two Red Bull drivers battling ahead of us. And Sergio Perez right on the back of that. Could we gain on that? That'll be very interesting at the end of the race. But like I say, in terms of Haas, they've done very, very, very well so far in the F1 season. I don't think anybody expects them to do so well. But going up the inside, should we go up the inside of Hulkenberg? I think we've got it. He's staying on the inside. Oh, he's staying on the inside. But we get a much better run and we've took Nico Hulkenberg. Can we get Sergio Perez on the back straight? Can we get Sergio Perez? Come on, we've got a much better run. Out of that corner, we're running out of fuel a little bit now. This could be a bit risky. And Sergio Perez, come on, come on, come on. We're just half a second behind. Can we get a better run out of this corner? I don't think we're going to do it now. 
No, we've still got enough fuel, which is fine. Nico Hulkenberg is right on the back of us. He'll have DRS. So we're going to have to defend like absolute hell here to keep our place. I think we're just going to do it on Nico Hulkenberg. And that is a pretty darn good result with Felipe Massa. Not Felipe Massa, Felipe Nasa. He's a Brazilian. But I'll tell you something. From 20th on the grid in a Sauber, which theoretically is the second or third worst car in the 2015 season, 10th is not bad at all. That is not bad at all. I mean, our teammate Marcus Ericsson started in 15th and stayed in 15th. But that is a pretty good result. Yeah, Pastor Maldonado obviously got down to 20th after he pretty much spun it at the first corner. But I'll tell you something, 5.4 seconds behind Lewis Hamilton at the end of that race wasn't bad at all. Seemed very close between the two Mercedes drivers. Wow. But anyway, let's move on to Toro Rosso. Right, so we're back for the second team of the episode today with Toro Rosso. And I've just thought, it never crossed my mind. Felipe Nas is Brazilian. He might have had some home track hacks. And seeing as we got a Renault engine in this Toro Rosso, I'm a bit fearful, I'm not lying. Well, I'm not lying. No, that's a bit of a stupid statement to make. But I'm not joking, I think. I'm a bit fearful for this race. But, there we go. Come on then, Carlos Sainz. He's been on the un unlucky one in 2015 out of him and Verstappen and it's lights out. And away we go. Mary starting further up than Will Stevens this time. We're going to have to go in the middle of them because Roberto Mary just not wants to back out. And we got the inside. And that's a decent start yet again. We push Felipe Massa out there. I keep saying Felipe Massa. Felipe Nasser out the way. Oh my god, what a start by Marcus Ericsson, that is. We're going to have to go up the inside. What a start this is from Carlos Sainz past the two. The Lotus cars, not the inside of Marcus Ericsson now. Oh, we're going to make that corner, I think we are. And up the inside of Marcus Ericsson, and what a start. That is 12 position gained in a sector. And I'll tell you what, if that happened in real life, F1, I'd be pretty shocked. And to be fair, we could gain even more. There are cars above us, and can we even beat Red? Can we beat Red Bull? We got up the inside of Kvyat. Oh my god, we've done it. We've done it. What a fantastic move that was. And can we even get Valtteri Bottas? This is on legend difficulty. I'm not joking yet. Here, go up the inside of Valtteri Bottas. Can we keep this move? Just got to make sure he doesn't spin us out. Come on, going around the outside. And unbelievably, no, this is on legend difficulty. I did check before this race because I thought it was a bit odd that we got points with NASA. But what a start that is from Carlos Sainz on the legend difficulty. Up to P6 already. The tough thing that's going to be now is holding on to that P6 from Valtteri Bottas with his immense Mercedes engine with the quickest Williams car on a, fat, on a straight line even. But we have got the Ferraris ahead of us. We can't beat them, can we? And this is on legend difficulty. I just don't believe how blooming OP we are today compared to last time. And we're getting spun out by everyone with McLaren and Manor. And we were just getting wrecked, but that looks like the Ferrari of Vettel's making a move on Felipe Massa for a podium position. And we just keep locking up. And seeing as they're making, um, well, they're making, well, what's the what's the word? Having a battle ahead. We could well have a chance of getting a podium. But Vettel and Massa have run each other wide. And oh my god, we could actually, if we make a dive at the inside of Kimi Räikkönen, and that's light. That's light. That's light. But it's great for, oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Overhyping ourselves a bit too much there. And we hit Räikkönen on the back. Got the inside of the flying fin. And that's P5. We just gotta be careful we don't tag his tyre like we do Felipe Massa, who's ahead of us uh, last time. And unbelievable this is. Could we actually do what we didn't weren't able to do in the 2015 and uh, the 2013 series even? And get a win with one of the teams. If we can get this far up with um, Carlos Sainz, I'll tell you what, with someone like Lewis Hamilton, it's going to be immense. But it's all right getting to that further place up. But we've got the two Finns behind us, who now we've DRS enabled. And what's with the Renault engine? We are probably going to be swamped unless these two battle. We think we've been hit. We've hit Raikkonen. Oh, no, we've hit Raikkonen. And that is just cheeky, cheeky stuff by Carlos Sainz. And us there, I don't like that whatsoever. A bit of dirty driving. But then again, what F1 YouTuber doesn't do that nowadays? They're all a bit dirty and we've nearly had a bit of oversteer there. But in a Williams sandwich, we've Carlos Sainz. I certainly wasn't expecting that. And we could even get higher up. To be fair, I don't think we will. But if Massa and Vettel are in a championship, I was going to say championship battle then, just a battle generally, um, then we could get them. But we're fighting for our lives. I'm pushing like hell here. And, unfortunately, isn't going to be enough. We are going to stay in P5, it looks like, though. Which is absolutely fantastic. And that's my Twitter going off, I think. But this result is absolutely fantastic. Bar the dirty driving, maybe. 
taking two drivers out. I think this deserves a light, lads. Come on. But anyway, we're coming across the line now, and we're not going to beat Felipe Massi because he's more than two seconds ahead of us. But Carlos Sainz at Brazil in the Toro Rosso in episode two this early, we've got fifth. Now that is a fantastic episode. Tenth and fifth. That is 11 points if you think about it overall. And Carlos Sainz, 55. He finished fifth. Triple five. Luckily, it's not six six six. That's the number of the beast. That wouldn't be good whatsoever. Carlos Sainz whoops his teammate, and Max Verstappen can go and stick his driver one up his arse. Anyway, joking aside, Kimi Raikkonen finished last. Ouch. That's never good. Even the man has finished ahead of him. That's bad. Anyway, my teammate didn't finish in the points. Marcus Ericsson finishes in eighth. And that just proves 4.4 seconds off the top, guys. Next time we'll be racing with Lotus and Force India. And I'll tell you something, we get fifth with Toro Rosso. With someone like Force India, could we even challenge for a podium here? Very interesting. I hope you've enjoyed episode two. Episode three will be out next Thursday. Make sure to leave a like for your support. And thank you so much for your support on the first video. Make sure to leave a comment if you enjoyed as well. And subscribe for more Sprint to the Finish. I've been Reviews Ty J. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.